Okay, everyone, I think we're probably going to get started. Um, so if you just want to kind of settle down a little bit. Um, so my name's John Whittle. I'm, I'm the dean of the faculty of IT here at Monash. Anybody know what a dean is? What's a dean do? Don't say nothing. Um, I, I, in my role as dean, I've basically got overall responsibility for the entire faculty of information technology at Monash. That includes about 150 academic staff that will teach, hopefully, some of you, about 50 or so professional staff that will support some of you, and our 5,000 students, um, as well as about 200 PhD students. So it's quite a big operation that keeps me awake many nights. <laughs> what I want to do, I've got about 15 minutes with you right now, and what I really want to do is to just talk a little bit about the future, okay? Or more importantly, I want to talk a little bit about what your future might look like. Bearing in mind that uh, you know, you're very much as potential undergraduates at the beginning of your lives, and the changes that we're going to see in the world over the next 25 years or so are, I predict, going to be quite astounding. And you should be thinking about those now, okay? So I'm going to talk a little bit about what that might look like. So here's a statistic for you, just to give you an idea of what the future might look like. Um, by some predictions, um, you know, the next five to ten years is actually going to see a lot, lot of change. Before we talk about 25 years out, the next five to ten years is going to see a lot of change. And you probably know this already because you can barely uh, you know, uh, listen to the radio nowadays or watch the television or watch a video on YouTube without hearing about the latest advances in information technology and how that is fundamentally changing the world in which we live. And just to give you one statistic that illustrates that, by 2020, technologists are predicting that we will have 30 billion objects in the world that are connected to the internet, okay? We already have billions of them. We're going to have 30 billion by 2020. So these are objects that can actually talk to each other without any human intervention. So we've already got some of that, and things are coming very fast. So we've, we've, we've already got prototypes of smart cars, for example, that can actually talk to each other on the freeway and exchange traffic reports or weather reports without the involvement of the drivers. Um, you know, we've already got you, lots of things like that. But we're going to see even more of that in the future. So you can, you can look forward to, for example, um, people like yourself wearing lots of connected objects on your body that will automatically be sending health data to your GP so that if you've got some kind of medical condition, the GP can monitor that remotely and can adjust your medication and can adjust your plans. You can imagine that the nature of driving is going to change. So you think of those advertising boards on the freeway. You know, not too, in the not too far distant future, what's going to happen is that as you drive past, those advertising boards are going to know who you are, they're going to know what you like, and the advertising on those boards is actually going to change to present tailored advertising specifically to you. Or you can imagine, if you're a parent, as many of you are in this room, imagine smart toys. So toys that your babies will play with that are connected to the internet and will actually track their cognitive development as they play, and we'll send that data back to you as parents so you have some kind of indication about whether your child is actually progressing at the expected rate or not. So 30 billion connected objects by 2020. Now, much of this development has been driven by something that we call artificial intelligence. And I like to say, you know, sometimes people don't know what artificial intelligence is. I once did a talk like this, and I asked, what's artificial intelligence? And a student put their hand up and said, oh, it's the intelligence that my parents have. <laughs> no, that's not artificial intelligence, okay? Artificial intelligence is building machines that think like human beings. And we already have um, artificial intelligence. You use it every day, actually. So when you go into Google and you search, Google is tracking your history, what you've searched for in the past, and it will tailor the results based on what you're interested in. It will present adverts based on what you're interested in. But more importantly than that, there are other pieces of AI that you might not even realize are AI. So if you have ever tried to contact your bank 
or a utility company by using one of these live chat boxes um, on your browser, the chances are that you were talking to a machine, not a human being. Just think about it. Did you know that? Um, <laughs> did it act like a human being? And we're going to see a lot more of this kind of development in the next uh, five to ten years, with some estimates saying that the global market for AI systems is going to grow from $7 billion to $90 billion by 2025. So we're going to see some pretty major changes. And the other area, so Matt already mentioned cryptocurrencies in the previous <coughs> talk. This is an example just to give you an idea of how rapid the changes are in IT. So it's not just that IT is changing and changing the world, it's that it's happening very, very, very fast. So cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency. Back then there was one cryptocurrency. There are now over 1,500 cryptocurrencies in the world being used for all kinds of different purposes. And the, the, the market capitalization of cryptocurrencies around the world is currently $100 billion. Now just to put that into perspective, $100 billion is about the same size as the GDP of a country like Morocco. Now, that has happened very fast. Cryptocurrencies are actually only nine years old. Bitcoin was invented in 2009. So in nine years, it's grown to the size of Morocco. Okay? Now, if you compare that to the way that traditional coins grow, so the first metal coin was actually invented in the 7th century BC. So it took a lot longer to actually grow. You know? So IT is changing very, very fast, which means that the future is going to look very different. So that's about the developments that we can actually predict pretty easily about what's going to happen in the next five to ten years. But I want to talk a little bit about what might happen a little bit longer term, 25 years from now. So, you know, if you're, if you're 17, 18, 16 right now, 25 years from now, you're going to be a little bit closer to my age. Um, and you're going to be, you know, well out into the workforce. You're going to be working for a few years. You'll have got one, maybe multiple degrees. Um, probably married, probably got kids, you know, um, and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. So what will the world look like for you then? And, of course, there's a famous Mark Twain quote that said that it's very difficult to predict things, especially the future, but let's try, shall we? Let's just try and predict the future for a few seconds. So basically the point I want to make is that IT, information technology, is going to fundamentally revolutionize every aspect of your lives from the moment that you get up in the morning to the moment that you go to sleep at night, okay? So what you can expect to see, you get up in the morning, you go to the bathroom, and you use your smart toothbrush. This will be a toothbrush that has sensors on it that can automatically tell you whether you've got correct brushing technique and whether you're co covering every aspect of your mouth, okay? You'll then go into your kitchen you'll sit down in a smart chair that will automatically adjust itself to ensure that you've got correct posture, okay? And then you'll get dressed for work and you'll put on smart clothing that will automatically heat you up or cool you down so that you are comfortable depending on what the outside ambient temperature is. All of these things are very likely to happen in the next 25 years. So you've done all of that. Now you need to get to work because there, there will still be jobs, despite what, what some people tell you. And, and the way that you transport yourself around is going to be very different. Of course, we'll all have driverless cars by then, but there'll be other developments as well. So one of the big changes we see is happening in airports. Um, there are some, uh, you know, the new airports are not being built with a, with a focus on physical infrastructure anymore. They're being built with a focus on IT systems. So if you think about airports, one of the biggest problems that airports have is that they create stress, okay? You go in there, you're rushing, you're trying to, trying to get to a flight that's going to leave at a particular time. It's often delayed, but you don't get good information about those delays. You get stuck. You've got to get through security. You show up, there's a big long line. It's very stressful. Now, technologists are looking at using IT systems to reduce those levels of stress in airports so that you get 
up-to-date information about what's happening so you know what's happening because stress is caused by uncertainty. You know, if you know what's happening, that can be, that can be reduced. And optimization algorithms that will get you through security quickly, that will get that plane in the air when it's supposed to get in the air. So the focus in future airports is going to be in IT. And one of the things I should say about this future is that Monash faculty of IT is going to be very much at the heart of these developments. So if we go back to the health example, for example, um, we're doing a lot of work in digital health right now within our faculty. Um, Monash is actually going to be building a new hospital on this Clayton campus, the Victoria Heart Hospital. That's going to be Australia's national cardiac hospital. And we're working with them to use different types of IT, different types of sensors in that healthcare context. Similarly in transport, actually we've recently won a new $5 million grant to look at smart pavements which is roads that can automatically get wider or narrower depending on the flow of traffic, okay? So now you've got to work. You need to eat, but the way that you're going to eat in the next 25 years is going to change. We're going to have smart farms that become commonplace. So there's going to be optimization algorithms that will automatically use just the right amount of fertilizer and bring it to just the part of the field where it's needed. You're going to have drones that will be delivering fertilizer and nutrients flying over the fields so that only those bits of the field that need the fertilizer will get it. Okay? And you're going to have all kinds of other, other different kind of smart systems. And again, at Monash IT, we're already doing some of this. We've actually signed an agreement with Bosch to make a plot of land very close to the Clayton campus available for one of the fir world's first smart experimental farms. And so we're going to be doing that in the next few years. So you've eaten. You're happy. Um, you're still going to need money in the future, um, possibly more of it, but you're still going to need money. But the way that you access that money and understand that money is going to change. So at Monash Faculty of IT, we've got some of the world's leading researchers in natural language processing. So this is a, a subset of AI that is all about trying to create machines that can communicate with you as though they were human. So again, I mentioned chatbots earlier. We already see some of this, but the current chatbots, you can pretty much tell that they're a machine. 25 years from now, you won't be able to tell that they're a machine. And so when it comes to your money, you'll be communicating with these machines, these avatars and so forth, to ask them questions like, you know, what percentage of my earnings did I spend on groceries in the last year? And it will know exactly what you're talking about, and it will give you an immediate answer, okay? Now, let's suppose that in the future, 25 years and now, you're unfortunate enough to have to go to a law court. It will happen to some of you. There are some criminals in the audience, okay? Just be careful. Um, so you might get into an accident on the way home in your driverless car, and you have to go to a law court. Law courts of the future are going to look very different. So there's going to be holographic scenes, crime scenes in courts, so that a jury doesn't have to listen about, just listen about the crime and try to imagine it in their mind, but they'll get 3D holographic images that can be brought up in front of them. They can actually walk through those crime reconstructions and get a much better understanding of what's going on. And again, within the Monash faculty of IT, we are already doing this kind of thing. So we've got a project going on right now with the Australian Federal Police where we're using machine learning to automatically detect illicit images of children and then flag them to police officers. Okay? So the future is coming. What's the common thread in all these scenarios of the future? You know, notice that the titles on the slide were not IT. It was health, it was food, it was transport, it was law, it was finance. But all of the changes that are coming are coming from IT. They're not coming from health or food or law. They're coming from IT. So IT is going to be the absolute center of everything that's changing in the next 25 years. Now, here's the, here's the interesting bit. So there's a famous study from Oxford University in 2013 that said that in the next 25 years, 47% of all jobs that we know today will not exist. Why won't they exist? Because they will have been automated by machines. Okay? So just think about that. You're choosing a degree. You're thinking about where that degree will go, where it will take you in terms of jobs. But 47% of those jobs that you might be thinking of there won't be any jobs, because they'll have gone, okay? Now, the good news, though, 
is that there will still be jobs. It's just that the nature of jobs will change. And I'll come back to this point later. But if you don't, well, the jobs will be, well, we'll come back to it now. The jobs will be in IT. Of course they will, because otherwise I wouldn't be here, would I? Um, of course I'm going to tell you that. But, you know, the, the world is still, if it's building all these systems, these IT systems, it's going to need IT technicians. It's going to need IT engineers. It's going to need IT managers. It's going to need cross-disciplinary IT to build these things, to maintain them, these things, to make sure they work properly, to embed them in everybody's lives. So that's how the future might look. If you don't believe me, because you can say, well, 25 years, not, it's not that long. You know, things aren't really going to change that much. One way we can understand how quickly the future is going to change is to look at how quickly the past has changed. So 25 years ago, many of you in this room weren't even born. Okay? 25 years ago, what technology did we have in the world? Well. That was the year in which we had the world's first popular web browser. So, you know, those of you using Chrome and Firefox today, you didn't use those 25 years ago. You used something called Mosaic. Anybody heard of Mosaic? Yeah, very few people, right? Um, it didn't have nice streaming video. There wasn't Netflix, all of that kind of stuff. It was just basically text, okay? Pretty, pretty rudimentary stuff. You didn't have iPhones that you carried around and kind of, you know, chatted with your friends and went on Instagram on all of this. If you wanted to talk to someone, um, you, kind of, you, well, you wrote them a letter in some cases um, with pen and paper. Wow. Um, but what you were seeing there was what was then called personal digital assistants. So these were kind of the precursors to the modern iPhones and so forth. So Palm Pilot was one of them. If anybody remembers Palm Pilots, um, they were a great thing. If you don't know what that is, go and look it up when you get home, get a history lesson. There was, of course, no social media. You didn't communicate through typing things into a box. You talked to each other. Um, I know it's an old-fashioned thing, you know. Um, DVDs, God, if we wanted to watch a movie, we didn't go to Netflix. We, we got in our car or we got on the bus. We went to a physical building. We saw rows of DVDs. We looked at them and we picked one out and we took it home and then we had to make sure that we watched it to take it back within 48 hours so we didn't get a late fine, okay? Um, you very rarely see DVDs around right now. And more importantly, perhaps, just about every industry that you can think of has been transformed by IT in that time. And just to give you one example of this, so I worked at NASA in California for quite a number of years, building software for space missions. If you look at the early space missions about 25 years ago, there was almost no software in them at all. Okay? No IT in them at all. It was all hardware. Now, if you look at, so at space missions, it's all software. You know? So even as, even as early as you know, 10 years ago, there was artificial intelligence that was put into a deep space probe that took full control of that deep space probe and ran it completely autonomously without the intervention of a human at all. Okay? So every industry, industry was transformed. So that's my basic message for today. Um, that brings me to the end. We're going to see absolutely massive changes in the way that we operate as human beings in the future. The nature of jobs is going to change drastically. But the good news is that there will still be jobs. But those jobs, many of them at least, are going to be underpinned by IT, although we'll probably see people not just needing to know IT, but needing to know other disciplines as well. And so the good news, from, at least from the perspective of our discipline, is that whatever the future holds, IT is going to be absolutely critically at its center. So thank you very much for listening. Um, as Matt said earlier, there are lots of people around with these green badges to answer further questions. Um, and there, are, there is going to be another presentation next if you want to kind of stick around for that. But thank you very much.